Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Game Tag video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. Paul is under the weather at the moment, so it's down to yours truly to give you the skinny on everything that's been going on in the tech world. And we have a lot of interesting stuff to get into today. And the first thing up on our itinerary is some updates for the RTX 4070. Of course, we have been talking a lot lately about the 4090 and the 4080, which, whoops, one of them might kind of becoming the 4070 Ti. But when it comes to the 4070, it's been a little quieter the last update we had from that was a leak from Kapiti 7 Kimi back in August of the specifications. And now we have a very interesting update from them, as they have tweeted, we won't see the original RTX 4070 AD 104. So let's just set that for a moment. I'm going to tell you what my personal opinion is as to what this means. On screen, you'll see the tweet from August that I previously just mentioned. And essentially, he's saying here that the two possible specs for the 4070 were a 12 gigabyte variant and a 10 gigabyte variant. Now, obviously, there are more differences here than just that, but I'm going to focus just on the memory just for the moment. So what I think he's saying with this tweet is that we will not see the 10 gigabyte SKU release. Instead, it will be the 12 gigabyte SKU, which again has that 7680 FP32, 21 GBPS to DDR6X, and a total car power of 285 watts, and a times by extreme score of roughly 11k. Now, why do I think this? Now, before I go any further, I just want to say that what I'm about to say is speculation. It's an educated guesstimate, I guess you could say. It's not based on anything our sources have said. As I said, unfortunately, Paul is under the weather at the moment, so we haven't been able to check with them to see what they have to say about this particular rumour. So it's purely based on what kpt 7 Kimmy is saying slash has said back in August. So with the red tape out of the way, I think that this means this because, well, according to what we've heard recently, the Navi32 on any 3 GPUs are going to have 16 gigabytes. So you can kind of imagine that Nvidia might look a little silly and have a bit of a pie on its face if it released a 4070 with only 10 gigs next to RDNA 3's 16. Now again, this is a pure educated guesstimate, not based on any inside information other than these tweets, so obviously a pinch of salt TM is definitely required, but it would make sense based on the recent information that we've heard regarding Navi32 that Nvidia are feeling the pressure and have decided to release the higher spec to skew for the 4070 in order to remain competitive in this space. As I've said a billion times, I'll probably say a billion more, this is a really important like performance and price bracket for both Nvidia and AMD, because as much as you know the flagship GPUs are exciting with the cutting edge performance and features and ray tracing and all the rest of it, this is where they make the bulk of their sales. Most gamers are going to go for a card in this range. Most people do not have a couple of grand just sitting around to buy a new GPU. So obviously it's very important that they are competitive with each other. It will be very, very interesting to see what actually happens in this performance slash price bracket from both Nvidia and AMD, because as I just said, it's a very important space. And if Nvidia have indeed done this, it could be that they are indeed feeling the pressure from AMD, but of course, Time will tell on this one, my friends. But we're going to move on from that to a few things from Intel, first of which we have a bit of an update on the 13900KS 6GHz processor. And we have some alleged prices for this, but of course, as always, any prices before it comes out are preliminary and maybe a placeholder, excuse me. So, of course, do keep that in mind. But with all the red tape out of the way, Credit goes to Momomo over on Twitter for this, of course you can find their tweet and anything else I've used as a source linked in the description below. So what they're showing here is that the 13900KS, which incidentally is a name not yet confirmed by Intel, but obviously it is very in line with what they've done before, we can expect a 22% price increase in comparison to the 13900K at the same store. But this is Intel's first consumer desktop processor with six gigahertz out of the box. Now we are fully expecting this particular SKU and a couple of other things to be launched at CES next year in January to be specific. So obviously it's not all that long to wait, which feels insane to say like, where has this year gone? <laughs> but it's not gonna to be too long before we find out exactly what's going on there. Anyway, we're gonna move on to an update for a mobile CPU, the 13900H to be specific, and all credit to hardwaretimes.com for this as they have found a listing for this particular processor over at the Geekbench 5 database. It is a rebrand, of course, of the 12th gen family 
parts even, excuse me, but we do see some differences in between the two. So the 1300H, according to what we see here, has six performance cores and eight efficiency cores, and the P cores will still be powered by the Golden Cove architecture, and L2 cache is still one meg. The main difference between this and the 12th gen part is the boost clocks. We do see a slight increase to 5.2 gigahertz, up from 5 gigahertz on the 12900H. And lastly, one more update from our friends over at Intel. There has been a very interesting report from My Drivers, which again was helpfully discovered and shared by HardwareTimes.com. And according to what My Drivers have found, we can expect the Meteor Lake processors to begin production soon. And of course, we'll be the first to leverage the 4NM process node. Just a reminder, according to official estimates, the 4NM node will improve the performance per watt by 20%, and mass production is already underway of the 4NM node. However, However, for the Meteor Lake P processors, which of course again is the 14th generation, we are going to be seeing a late 2023 launch in limited volumes and again we are expecting production of that to begin soon. Now I think it's pretty safe to say that Meteor Lake is looking pretty damn interesting. Of course Intel were kind of running behind AMD the last few years, you know, Ryzen was just on this absolute tear, but of course they're finally competitive once again with Raptor Lake, and I think it'd be really, really interesting to see what happens with Meteor Lake, you know, how are AMD going to respond to this, you know, are Intel going to be as aggressive to keep that lead? I mean, I would certainly hope so, because as I myself and Paul have said a thousand and one times at this point, more competitive between more competitiveness, excuse me, between AMD or Intel or whoever, it could be between Bob and Steve, it doesn't matter. It results in a better product for us because, well, when you actually have to try to beat your competitive, it forces you to be more innovative, etc., etc., etc. And in the end, we get a better product for it. So I'm really interested in seeing what happens not only with Intel's future processor roadmap, but also with AMD's. Obviously, we have the alleged Zen 4 3D vCache processors on the horizon and probably lots of other exciting stuff from Intel as well. So safe to say it's not going to be boring <laughs> in the future when it comes to these two companies trying to outdo each other. Anyway, guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Your support really is appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.